So, welcome back to the course on um, architectural design of ICs. So, in the last class we are seeing this codic architecture. So, codic has a vast application for the DSP algorithms. Basically, um, uh, whenever this cost or the area, hardware cost or the area is a major constraint. So, at the time we may mostly prefer to use codic instead of the um, in general Mac based app that means approaches. Okay. So, um, um, we are we are uh, that means we have used when to use why we will use codic and then what is the that means concept of codic that we are basically um, see in the last class. Okay. So, whenever we are doing this is the nothing but the initial vectors that we have to rotate by some predefined angle to get the desired this uh, rotational uh, angle. Okay. So, how to do that? So, um, we have seen that uh, suppose we are, we are having one initial vector which is x 1 and x y 1. So, if I just rotate that, if I want to rotate that uh, another that means the vectors which is being rotated by the desired angle theta. So, that value can be written as uh, this x 2 value can be written as in terms of x 1 cos theta minus y 1 sin theta and then this y 2 value can be written as uh, this um, y 1 uh, cos theta plus x 1 sin theta. So, that we have already seen. Okay. So, based on that based on that what we have the what we have done we have that means we have not used the original rotation, we have used or we have introduced the pseudo rotation. So, what is the meaning of pseudo rotation? Pseudo rotation basically they are being introduced that means, keeping this fact the values will be in terms of this 2 to the power minus i. Means what? actually what was my initial equation that was x i minus or if x i plus 1 if I write it or x 2 there I, we are basically writing in terms of i if I if I write. So, at the time x i plus 1 that can be written as x i minus initially it was y i into tan inverse of alpha i right but this alpha i that has been replaced by the values of this d i into 2 to the power minus i. So, that means, now what I said predefined values of the angle. So, how we can calculate the predefined values of the angle? So, that means, initially or from the beginning we are using this particular set where the alpha uh, or the tan inverse values tan in that means tan of this alpha i those values will be dependent on the 2 to the power i means it will be dependent on the 2 to the power uh, that means uh, this uh, 0 then the 2 to the power minus 1 then 2 to the power minus 2 then 2 to the power minus 3 then 2 to the power minus 4 something like this. So, then what will be the corresponding that means values of this tan inverse of 2 to the power minus i. So, we can easily get that means, as this number is basically fixed. So, that means, from the beginning. So, this I know. So, this number I, I can write in terms of degree. So, tan inverse of 2 to the power minus i when i equals to 0 means this is tan inverse of 1 means that is 45 degree. So, tan inverse of 2 to the power minus 1 means that is tan inverse of 0.5 the values is 26.6 degree. So, these are the basic predefined elementary angle which I have to store somewhere to calculate any values of the theta. So, how we can cal calculate? Suppose, this 30 degree angle is my desired angle of rotation. So, how we can do that? So, initially it will be rotated by 45 degree. Okay. So, then based on actually if I just go to the next slide. So, initially 
this is the my desired angle is 30 degree. Okay. So, initially initially it is being that means, the the first set of this 2 to the power minus z, that means, tan inverse of 2 to the power minus 0 which is tan inverse of 1 that means, it will be shifted by 45 degree. Okay. And basically what will be the direction of that, what will be the direction of that, that basically dependent on the values of this z i sorry z i plus 1. Okay. So, what I said in the uh, in the previous class I said z is basically holds the value that in one each of the iteration how much value or how much is the angle I am basically moving. Okay. So, depending on the that means, if it is if the values are coming in the negative. So, this now this d i value is the sign of this particular angle. Okay. So, if uh, this d i equals to that means, if this z is negative. So, at that time d i will make this particular equation positive and this will become negative. Okay. So, how to do that? So, that means, this is the this is the equation that is x i minus d i 2 to the power minus i of y i and i the y i plus 1 equals to y i plus d i x i minus uh, into 2 to the power minus i and z i equals to z i minus d i of e i. So, e i in each step it is being calculated. So, initially what is this? This is 30 degree. So, that means, 30 degree means this is positive d i is positive. So, this is 1, 1 means 30 is the z i z i minus d i into e i, e i is the elementary angle. So, first elementary angle is 45 degree. So, from 30 degree 45 degree will be minus. Okay. So, z i plus 1 will be initially it will be after the first iteration it will be minus 15 degree because 30 minus 45 is 15 degree. right? So, then this 15 degree will be the next corresponding values of z i. Okay. So, minus 15 comes over here. So, minus of this now it will become this equation plus or positive because this is mean negative means the sign of this will be negative means negative negative it will be positive. So, this the what is the next secondary elementary angle that is 26.6. So, then this 15 degree will be added with 26.6 which is this 11.6 this results 11.6. So, now 11.6 is my in the next iteration z i value current z i value. Okay. So, then as this is positive what is the next next elementary angle that is 14 degree. So, now 14 degree will be minus. So, minus of this this again this indicates minus 2.4. So, 11.6 minus 14 that is 2.4. So, 2.4 again. So, that will be added with th that means, the next third sorry this fourth one fourth elementary angle which is 7.1. So, 7.1 this is plus 4.7 then plus 4.7 that is minus with this 3.6 3.6 1 1.1 in this manner. So, unless and until I am getting this particular thing as 0, okay, I will try to move the corresponding vectors position in this manner. Okay. So, that means, what is the that means, uh, the final values are like this and if I consider the that means, the bit length of that is 10 bit. If I consider more than this, this value will be more and I have to do this iteration more on this. But at the time as this value is becoming very much less over here or it is nearer to 0. So, that means, I can basically say that okay, whatever value or the corresponding that means, this x i value and y i value I will get at this particular location. So, that's, that will be my desired sin theta and cos theta value. Okay. So, that means, we have started with the initial angle and then we are just rotating in this manner. So, here you see initially 
basically this is this 30 degree shift, then this is minus 45, then this plus 26, then again minus 14, then then 7.1 in this manner it will this vector will just rotate and finally, it will just lie on this particular line. Okay. So, they, the, it says that the first 3 of 10 pseudo rotation leading from x 0 and y 0 in rotating by plus 30 degree and this choosing of the sign of the rotation angle in order to force z to 0. So, that means here what is my the this corresponding location that means why this z is intended to be 0 because here what is happening we are considering the that means whenever if i just see this equation okay if i just see this equation so at the time what is zi equals zi plus 1 equals to y zi minus alpha i when this zi equals to alpha i so at the time it will become zero at that time only i can say that okay so this is whatever value i am getting so that value is same as the that means the corresponding desired angle which is alpha here okay so that's why we are basically trying to set this value or this we are just making this z value to 0 or nearer to 0 okay so that means whatever x and x i plus 1 sorry x and y value we are getting at this particular uh, this iteration those values are not correct because this corresponding z values are not nearer to 0. So, here you see this these, these values is basically currently holding the values of 0 and whatever the x and y value I will get. So, that is the final values of x theta oh sorry sin theta and cos theta. Okay. So, in this manner and why we have intentionally doing this, this d i introduce this term d i into 2 to the power minus i because 2 to the power i means what? It is being divided by 2. So, in 0 means what? This is 1. So, it is just directly x i minus in the first iteration it will be x i x 1 sorry x 0 minus y 0. In the next it is what? x 1 minus this is 1 means by 2. So, it will be y 1 by 2. In the third it will be x 2 minus y 2 by 4. Then in the fourth it will be x 3 minus y 3 divided by 8. Why? Because this power of this is also increasing. So, divide by this means what? divide by this 2 to the power i means just nothing but the shift of the LSB. Okay. So, shift in the that means in the in the right direction if you just do that means you just discard the LSB position okay, or shift the data in the right direction uh, that means in the right direction. So, you will get divide by 2 very easily you do not require any hardware shifter at that time. That means, shifter means any shift register to do that. Only hardware shifting or just that means, discarding of the LSB you will get it. You do not need any extra logic gates to do that particular operation. Okay. So, here only one what thing you require that you require only the subtractor or addition operation. So, that means, okay. so that means so, this is the that means the angle ok. So, if I just so, if I just that means summed up this algorithm. So, at that time the algorithm is basically written as written as x i plus 1 that is equals to x i minus d i into 2 to the power i minus y into y i i y i plus 1 that is y i plus d i into 2 to the power minus i of x i where z i equals z i plus 1 equals to z i minus d i of the alpha i or theta i whatever is the desired angle we are choosing. So, these three equation what it requires basically it requires this 2 shift 
this two shift operation because of this 2 to the power i in this two equation and then one lookup table. Lookup table means this is the rhombest kind of structure where we have to store these elementary values which is nothing but this theta i over here. Elementary angle means whatever is the values of like this 45 degree, then 26.6 degree, then 14 degree, then 7.1 degree. So, this value or this angle value has to be stored somewhere. So, this you need for this theta i value you need to need one lookup table to store all these values and then what you need? You need adder or subtractor operation. Why adder or subtractor? 3 adder or subtractor? Because based on this d i it will be either addition operation or shift that means subtraction operation. If this d i value is uh, that means that means the corresponding value of this this is positive, positive means this will be minus. If this value is negative, so at the time this will become positive that means addition this will become subtraction okay, and this is also addition. So, that means I need one adder subtractor circuit, so, where this control will be done through the corresponding sign of this. So, let us consider, so here z i plus 1, when can I recognize this z i plus 1 equals to that is uh, minus negative or positive? If I consider the MSB of z i plus 1. So, MSB of z i plus 1 equals to 1 means this indicates this is one negative number because that is the sign bit. Considering that sign bit, it indicates that okay, if it is one, so it indicates that okay, this is negative. So at that time, it will be positive, it will be negative. So if this is zero, so at that time this will be negative, this will be positive, and this will be negative two. So based on this, I need this is not three addition. The, I need three addition come subtraction operation. Okay. So, if you just see the architecture of this, of this particular equation. So, here what is there? That means, x i plus 1 equals to x i minus d i 2 to the power minus i of y i. Now, what is i? i is the number of iteration I will use. So, number of the iteration, how it depends? It depends on the, that means, what is the length of the, that means, theta I am using. So, if I use the theta length of let us consider 10 bit, so that means the 10th is the iteration of what I have to do. Okay. Then if I consider that means suppose the codic length is of 24 bit, so that means the 24th number of iteration I have to do. So, that means, in the, that means it will be done as um, this 2 to the power minus that means 2 to the power minus 0 first then 2 to the power minus 2 then 2 to the power minus 3 2 to the power minus 4 at the time the lookup table entry will be of 24 numbers and each of this tan inverse of 2 to the power minus i. Okay. So, here you see so, <coughs> so whatever is the that means with this length we are using so based on that there will be so, at the very first it will i goes to 0 means this stage will be done, then it will be x 1, then it will be x 2, then it will be x 3, up to how much? Up to if I consider for n bit, so it will be up to x n minus 1, y n minus 1 and z n minus 1. So, what is this? This is basically parallel architecture. Okay. And then, if I if you just consider this parallel ar architecture, what it requires? It requires this adder subtractor unit. Okay, so adder subtractor unit. Then this shifting operation in each of this, how much bit it will be shifting? It will shift zero at this particular, one at this particular, two at this particular. Why? Because you see, this two to the power i means i is for zero. Then for in the first iter first stage it will require 2 to the power minus 1 then 2 to the power minus 2. So, here you see at this this is shifted by 0 then this is shifted by 1 this is shifted by 2 and here it is shifted by n minus 1. So, what I said this is nothing but the hardware shift. Okay, so, you just truncate the LSB. So, you will get the results as 
divide by 2, divide by 4, divide by 8 something like this. Okay. And then what I require I need to store these corresponding values of this alpha. So, at the alpha 0 then alpha 1, alpha 2 in the, in the same manner of alpha n minus 1. Okay. So, if I consider n bit, so n entries of ROM or lookup table will be there. Okay. So, uh, then if I consider this iterative architecture, so here you see each of these stage is very much similar and as I am considering this is as a parallel structure. So, that is why it is all the stages are being implemented in one particular that means in one flow. Okay. But in iterative in one of this one of this particular stage now it can be rerun for this n time n minus 1 sorry n times. If I run this particular one stage n times I will get the same results whatever I am getting the from this particular circuit. So, at that time what will happen? At that time the hardware requirement that will be less. Okay. So, hardware requirement will be less because I have to use only 3 addition operation and this registers and maxes to select whether I have to choose this intermediate results or I have to load the initial x0 and y0 value. Okay. So, this maxes is basically once it takes the z that means initial values of x, y, z and then it takes another value of the that means in the intermediate stage so that means from after 0 then again it will choose this then 1 then 2 that means it runs in a loop. So, then what it that means the advantage of this particular circuit is that hardware wise it takes very less amount of that means component. Why? Because here if I need this n minus 1 number of stage that means, so how many number of addition subtraction I require that is 3 into n minus 1. So, that means 3 n minus 3 number of this adder subtractor I require over here, but here only I require 3 adder subtractor circuit and apart from that I need extra 3 marks which is not required in this case. Okay. So, that is why, but at that time where I am losing that means this throughput wise it is basically less. Why less? Because I have to wait for the 10th cycle suppose here uh, in this particular example we have seen that 10 iteration. So, after that means 10th iteration only I will get the output at this particular location. So, for 10th clock cycle I have to wait. Okay. So, that is why this that means that is the latency time or that, that is the, that is the latency of this particular circuit. So, up to that much time I have to wait to get the results of that though I have put the inputs. Okay. So, that is why this uh, and throughput means what that it is the time to get the output after applying the input that means at what time I have applied the input at what time I am getting the input the difference between that that is the throughput of that. So, here this throughput is basically less and how many times it is n time less because n times it has to the run loop has to run for completion of the whole operation. Okay. And here for this actually the shifter here it is not hardware shifter because in each stage it will be changed. So, I need barrel shifter okay. and the barrel shifter is basically in the hardware shifter what I require? I do not require any logic, okay. only the truncation of the LSB that is sufficient, but the barrel shifter it requires some of the logic to do this that means here what is the in each of the stage this is barrel shifter or I can say that as a variable shifter that means depending on the stage the number of shift operation will be changed. Okay. So, based on that now this equation okay. and uh, so this is the that means that means the advantage of iterative circuit cost wise is this advantage yes, but throughput wise or this um, it is not better than this. And here what is the problem in this particular circuit? 
as you see there are n number of stage in any of the path in any of the path okay uh, not any of the path because the sign of this again it is dependent on this okay means what basically it will uh, that means dependent on this the operation of this again this in that means is dependent the output of this or the sorry this input is basically out from output from this particular operation okay so that means and then again it is passing through n number of stage okay so that means the as the stage or the iteration number increased in this so the number of that means the delay amount is also increased so the delay amount increased if the n is more so the number of delay or the, that means amount of delay is also more so at the time what i can do if i put you see this is one very regular structure if i make pipeline of this structure pipeline means in each of this point if i put registers actually what is happening here this is basically totally data driven means what whenever there is a change that means whenever there is this x0 and y0 this value is available so it will immediately that means after whatever is the delay for this particular address subtractor after that time the output will be available over here then again it will start its operation then again it will start its operation after this much of delay then again this then again after this much of delay again this something like this this will run sequentially considering only the delay of this but from the data driven of this particular circuit so that's why this is this is purely combinatorial circuit so that's why this is this circuit is basically data driven so instead of that if i put in this particular intermediate point if i put register that means this point if i put registers in this point if i put register in this point if i put registers so at that time this will be broken because of this particular register and at that time from the data driven property of this circuit now it will depend in on the clock driven so in each each of the stage now at they will not be adjacent to each other they will be independent to each other that means this this particular stage will execute at if that is at zero clock cycle this will be executed at next clock cycle which is one clock cycle or the first clock cycle then this will be executed at the third one this will be executed at n minus one time that means one clock cycle okay so in this manner this will be changed and at the time the delay will be lesser so delay will be just only this adder subtractor that means that is really dominated by mostly this adder subtractor delay okay so that means at that time my area will be more how area will be more as i have to introduce again 3n minus 1 number of extra registers to do that but speed wise it will be on the hash side okay so that's why uh, for it is dependent upon you whether you have to use this pipeline codec so the, at that time this structure will be named as pipeline codec so pipeline codec architecture you 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 have to use so pipeline codec architecture means cost wise it is not that much uh, that means the constant is not that cost if you if you want to improve the uh, that that means the speed of operation so at that time you make it pipeline codec okay but if you want your cost as a major constant so at that time this architecture is very much efficient you follow this architecture obviously the throughput will be lower but area wise this is has the most advantages okay so um, for today so this is not only the fact that okay after this is the hardware i am getting so this is not only the fact that after doing this pseudo rotation or this equation i am getting it but there are several other terms also and what i said that many of the arithmetic operation we can perform using codec so how we can do and what are the other things which are associated with the codec so that we will see in the next class so thank you for today's class